Hey guys, Eerie is here and welcome along to another video. Now it's always a good day when Sunday rolls around and the following week's dailies are announced as being at Suzuka. As many of you know, it is my favourite tracking GT Sport. It is where I'm quickest, so we're going to go in on the main account on Monday night and try and get stuck in with the big boys. Let's see how we get on. So we're here in the time trial section. Trying to get as fast a time as we can before the race itself. But quickly before we get into that, as always, if you like the video, please remember to click the like button, guys. Likewise, if you're enjoying the content and aren't already subscribed, please pause the video right now and go and hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. You'll also notice that the wheel cam is back. Now, it was absent for a little while whilst the PC was being changed over, but I've got it all sorted now and it is back and I've decided to use the Fanatec F1 style rim this time. I thought it was quite fitting considering the cars that we're going to be racing in today. Thank you all so much by the way for watching because without you guys wheels like the one that I'm using right now just wouldn't be possible and if you're interested in any of the gear that I use there are links to everything down in the description below. But apologies there I digress. So as I was saying we're here in the pre-race time trial. Now I have spent five minutes prior to this studying the best time in the region and I've actually put him as a ghost as something to chase. Now I find, and I make no real excuses, quality really really boring. So I'm going to give myself two banks of ten laps here for quality sessions. So the goal that I set myself was to get into the 135s and I've put the fastest time as I've mentioned in the region on as something to chase. So. Having looked at the top 10 times and used the ghost for a reference, we got up to speed reasonably quickly. We were in the 136s by the end of lap 4 and then we did a 136.675 on lap 8. And then we went even quicker with a 36.547 on lap 9. And by the time our 10 laps were up, our best was a 136.511. So I knew at this point we were about a second off the 10th fastest time in the region and I knew I needed to find some more time if I was going to be competitive in those big boy races. But I didn't want to push it and get frustrated, which often happens when I spend ages just churning out laps by myself. So I took a break, had a brew, and came back for another 10 laps to see if we could improve. And when we came back, we were straight away on the pace. We almost beat our personal best on lap 3, only being 1 1,000th one off. And we just continued to steadily improve from there. And eventually on lap 5 we broke into the 35s with a 135.988 which I think was the best time that I could do. There wasn't much more time left in me to be honest. I did go all the way to lap 10 in this session but I won't bore you guys with that. That time that I did, the 135.988 at the time was only 4 tenths off the 10th best time in the region. So I was very happy with that understandably and I took that into the race itself. So here we are for the race session and as the lobby is revealed you can see we're starting in third and it doesn't actually look like we're in the top split here. It didn't have the drivers I would expect to have in this one but that's no disrespect to those in this race. It's still going to be a tough one and we're going to make the best of it. The goal remember is to improve our DR before the new FIA season. So as we get to work here waiting for the lights to go out, we've got traction control on and my thumb on the handbrake. And as the lights go out, we release the handbrake and we get an OK start, quickly getting that traction control off and getting the radar on. It's really important that we do that as we have a Spaniard up the inside into turn one. But I'm happy to give him that space though, as the outside of turn one becomes the inside of this corner here. So we've got track position, we can carry more speed through and we can thwart that attempt to try and take our third place. So we're still in third, which is great and we're just going to try and settle down now. As always, for every strategy that I do, I just don't want to make any mistakes in the first couple of laps. I don't want to throw it all away. You can't win it in the first corner, or the first lap even, but you can lose it. So let's introduce the race now. We've got 11 laps here at Suzuka, one of my favorite tracks in the world in the Super Formulas. One of the best things about these races when this car comes up are the liveries for me. There's such incredible creativity from you guys who make those. So thank you to, well, from all of us really, who take the liveries that you guys make. I'm not creative in that sense. So I've pinched one and gone for the Senna McLaren livery. 
As I've mentioned, we've got 11 laps around here. Softs and medium compounds are available and we need to use them both because if you don't use them, you're gonna get a big penalty come the end of the race. Fuel isn't an issue at all. We've got more than enough of that. And as a result of those factors, we've elected to go for the two stopper. So it's gonna look like softs for five laps, come in, change to softs again for another five laps, and then come in on the last lap for medium. So we're on the harder compound, for as little time as possible but staying within the criteria of the race so over these first five laps we've done exactly what we wanted to keep it nice and clean and we're going to come in from third place we're going to put in no fuel required remember we're going to get those tires a new set back on change those boots and we're going to come back in third again with a brand new set of soft so we're going to again sit on these for the next five laps before the end of lap 10, where we jump onto the mediums. Rejoining the action a little bit further down the line, keep your eyes up in front. You're gonna see that the leader, or the then leader, has gone off coming through Spoon. Easily done. I do feel for him, I think we've all been there, if we're honest, but we're gonna be up into second. And he came in at the end of the lap there. You can see that he was on mediums as well, so that kind of explains it. But looking ahead, all we can do now is keep pushing we will probably see him later on down the line now that he's on softs but all we can do here as i say is because we're by ourselves just keep pushing and see where the chips fall and i'm going to start using the overtake button now i haven't really used it too much in this race i'm very conservative so i like to keep it just in case i need it at the end of the race and you can use it for two things or three things really you can use it to defend you can use it to attack or you can also use it, as you'll see in the subsequent races, to generally be faster. By giving you a boost coming out of, well, here, for example, at Suzuka, at the hairpin, spoon, or the Casio triangle, for a good run down the long straights. And we're going to fast forward now to our in-lap here on lap 10. I'm trying to navigate Suzuka, which is hard enough in these things, without morons like this. Do it well, you can see what he's doing. I'm not sure how bad things have to get in your life before you spend your time a lap down in a daily race with a penalty weaving around, despite being ghosted, trying to put other drivers off. Moron. But anyway, unsurprisingly, I was not put off by his tactics. We got rid of him as he served his penalty and then it was time to come into the pits. We put mediums on this time and despite holding on to third, and then second for much of the race, we're gonna come out in fourth. And this is down to a culmination of the different strategies that we've mentioned earlier, which is good. That is what we want to see on Gran Turismo Sports. But as we finish this one, it wasn't really too much of an eventful race, but I'm happy for those sometimes. And we're gonna come home in fourth place and it served as some good practice for what I hope will be a good next race in the Monday night lobbies, which if you don't know, are always the busiest of the week. So for race two, we're definitely in the top lobby now. Lots of names in this one, and we're starting in eighth. We've got another standing start here. Flick TC onto one again. Get it down to zero, and then get that radar on. I'm going to move to the inside here, and to my left, you're going to see Blue Racer, and he's going to go right the way around the outside just like we did in the first race, so we're gonna be down to ninth. Now, this is a new challenge for me. It's driving in and amongst other drivers. We didn't really have too much of that in the first race, and I'm finding out very quickly, like these are like gnats at a barbecue. These cars are so erratic, difficult to closely battle with, especially when there are no brake lights. Well, I think there are brake lights, but they're, well, they're minimal. So, it's gonna be difficult, to not have any contact whilst battling closely with these guys. And we're gonna see here as we move to the second part of Spoon that the Italian upper head goes off. We've all been there as we saw in the first race, dipping a wheel onto the Astro and the consequences that it has for you. So we're gonna be back up to eighth where we started. And as we start lap number two, there are other places on this track where there are consequences if you get too close to the sun. And up ahead, side by side, as we all know, never works into turn number one here. The Brit just runs out of road there and we take another position, so we're up to seventh now. So, 
things are looking okay at this point. We're in the top lobby, we're keeping it clean, and we're slowly making our way up the field. But in probably typical fashion, you're gonna see that something goes wrong at the Degna. So coming through here, which are absolutely crazy in these cars, you take Degna one flat, I dip a wheel onto the Astro, meaning I couldn't brake, which catapults me into our old friend Blue Racer. Apologies again, buddy, for that. I of course wait for him, and then I am the recipient of a three second penalty, which I completely deserve. I'm just sorry really that it affected Blue Racer's race, to be quite honest, and as I come through Spoon, I could have gone for a move here, but that would have just been an absolute joke, you know, after hitting him and then making a move on him only to then serve our penalty a couple of seconds later. So I pulled out of that one and I'm just gonna come through the gate here and do my time. And by the time I serve my penalty and then get back up to speed, you're gonna see here that I fall all the way down to 17th. So whilst it sounds like a complaint, it's not a complaint at all. I fully deserve that one, although it is quite difficult in these cars, as I've mentioned. And coming through the final corner here, the German upper head is going to be off. So we're going to gain one of these places back as we go round the outside of him there. And I'm going to look for a move on the Frenchman as we cross the line to start lap number three. But he's in the slipstream of the Brit in front, so I can't really get alongside. There's going to be a little bit of contact from behind, which is going to push me into the Frenchman in front. Can't knock that though, as you know, it's easy to do. But thankfully, there was no penalties for anyone there and we got away with it. And as we come into Spoon here, I'm not sure if there was contact, something's happened and the Brit has gone wide. Now I try and get alongside with the boost. I can't quite get there though. And we're gonna have a run down towards 130R. I try and move back in, but the collision box for some reason is a little bit bigger than the cars so there's a slight bit of contact there I think about making a heroic move into the Casio triangle but I think better of it I didn't really leave my nose in there because that would have definitely just caused contact and probably with how sensitive the penalties are around here in this specific race given us both a penalty and really I just didn't want to be responsible for that so as we start lap number four here look up ahead there's going to be another casualty He's going to rejoin here. We're going to look for a run down the outside, but we're going to pull out because we know that he's going to be out of sync coming through the S's. And as such, we're able to get him round the outside and we're up to 14th. As we come under the bridge here, I just don't know what happened. You're going to see here that there's going to be further contact. I'm not sure if I broke too late or if he just broke a little bit earlier, but I make contact again and get another penalty. Again, not a complaint, completely deserved. Thankfully though, also he didn't get one. So that's probably the silver lining there, is that I'm the only one who got punished. Again, I didn't go for the move. If you get a penalty, if you know you're gonna serve it a couple of corners later, don't go for the move and hold up the person you've just hit even further. But apologies as always to you for this one, Winchy. Just completely unintentional from me. I could have gone for the move as I mentioned, but that wouldn't have been cool. So I've just served my penalty and we're back down disappointingly to 15th. Now, these cars, as I've touched on a little bit, are just a pig to battle with. They're so responsive, borderline sketchy, making it really difficult for someone, even like me, as you've been seeing here, who tries to avoid contact at all costs, not to hit other cars. And um, what also doesn't help, you probably saw earlier, is the collision box. I tried earlier to pull out of the slipstream or pull back into the slipstream, but I pulled in a little bit too late. And for some reason, the collision box looks to be about a foot wider than the car itself. Again, not a complaint, just an observation. I can imagine it's quite difficult to get those things right with all the different sizes and sort of open wheel versus GT type issues. I don't know. I'm not technical, so who am I to judge? But it doesn't help anyway. And you're gonna see here, I try for a move on the German, but the box is outside of where the car ends, so I'm just gonna bounce off him. But thankfully again, neither of us get a penalty, and it was gonna be our in-lap anyway, so not the end of the world for our race. So, in the pits then, as mentioned earlier, no fuel required. And we're gonna go out onto the mediums just for this one lap. 
as opposed to last time where we left it too well not too late but we left it late to get rid of our mediums we're going to do it a little bit earlier which is going to allow us for a final push in this one and see who we can get after so after a lap on those mediums it was time to come in we've selected the softs again no fuel required remember and it's time to go get after some people so we're going to come out here and there's going to be quite a load of clear track around us. We've got over three seconds to the car in front and over four seconds to the car behind. So we're just going to try and get our head down here, keep it nice and clean and just pump in quick laps and see if we can pick anybody off. And on the following lap here, the yellows are going to be out as we enter the hairpin. The Brit appears to have had some sort of issue. But he also looks super erratic at the same time. Not sure if that's him or there's something else going on that I'm not aware of. So I'm just going to stay patient here. Knowing that he has a penalty and he's going to have to serve it in you know, the next few seconds. The last thing we want to do is to go for a move on him. Get it wrong, get ourselves a penalty or even compromise him even more. So no risky moves. He's going to serve his penalty and we've gone through which is going to release us to go after the Brit up in front. He's two and a half seconds up the road, so the gap is definitely closing now. And as we arrive at Spoon on the very next lap, we're with him. So you're going to see here, I'm going to give it a full dose of overtake. You can see my left hand thumb there just planted on that button. He's going to go on the inside to defend. We then go to the outside and we're going to put all our trust in him as we go side by side through 130R. Top man though, he gives us space and we're going to make a move into the Casio triangle. Now I'm conscious not to take my usual line through here because I don't want to cut him off after he's just shown us that respect through there because he could have quite easily, and I know a lot of drivers who would have just run us out of road through 130R, ruining our race entirely. So great job by him. We're now in 13th as we start lap number 10 and we've got two laps to go. Up ahead, got Max Power is in front. He had rapid race pace last time out. So I think it's just going to be a case of consolidating here. And considering we collected five seconds of penalties and we were car number 12 in this one, a 13th place isn't actually the end of the world. So as we come into the Casio Triangle for the 11th and final time here, that was the way it was going to stay. As anticipated, I couldn't touch Scott Max Power, even though he's got a penalty, it's not going to be enough. And we're going to come across the line to take a hard fought 13th place. Oh, I don't know what it is about these Monday night races, but for some reason, it must be the pressure. I just get it wrong. What seems like every single time. Now usually that would be the end of the video, but not this time. We're going to fast forward to the next day. I was thinking about last night's races and I just couldn't go out like that. Our DR had taken a hit as well and so had our SR, so I felt I had to go at least once more to get back on where we need to be before this week's races finish. We're going to be starting in fourth again as we did in our first one. We had a knock on our SR due to penalties, we're actually on 96 after the previous race so we need to be careful in this one and I'm keen to get back up to 99 where it should be so as we get off the line here we're going to move to the inside to defend we do go in too wide I'm keen again to make sure I give the guy on the outside enough space and we're going to be side by side into the next corner but we managed to successfully and cleanly defend that position so a good start here staying in fourth place Coming down the back straight, the Brit up ahead has a run on the Spaniard. There's a very late move from the Spaniard there, blocking him, giving us a run down the outside into the Casio Triangle. I'm going to break a little bit later, get it stopped. The outside, of course, turns it into the inside for the second part of the corner. We're going to make the move cleanly once again, and we're up into third place. We give it a good old dose of the overtake button on exit, just to ensure there's no chance of a counter run on me down into turn number one. Now I must admit, having seen that move from the Spaniard, I was a bit apprehensive about trying to make a move here. We'd had enough penalties and I just didn't want to get any more. But thankfully though, he takes matters out of our hands as he goes off at Spoon. 
He's just going to go too wide and get eaten by the turf monster like we've seen before in previous races and we've all been there I'm sure. So we'll take that and we're moving up to second now. And as with last week, I'm going to switch up the strategy in this one. So to recap, what we did in the first race was soft, soft, medium. In the second race we did soft, medium, soft. And in this one we're actually going to do softs, then mediums. And what I'm going to hope for, just like Bathurst last time out, that the time lost being on the harder compound is less than the amount I would have lost having made a pit stop. I guess we're going to find out. I've seen a couple of other guys do this, so we're going to give it a go. And we're going to come in at the end of lap number five for our one and only pit stop. We come out in second, just ahead of the Brit. But as we're on the harder compound, we come under attack. But for some reason, I'm a bit more aggressive these days. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to go mega defensive into the hairpin. And again, give it a good old dose of overtake on the exit. I don't want to give up this place easily. And this defending continued on the next lap as well. I'm pushing pretty hard, so much so that I'm going to run wide out of spoon. But I kept my foot in it and with the overtake button on as well. Unfortunately though, I did just clip the wall a little bit in my blind faith of trying to keep it in a straight line, full power, and unfortunately, I'm gonna drop down to fourth. To be honest though, in hindsight, it's probably quite lucky that we're still facing in the right direction. I just don't really know what's gotten into me, to be quite honest. Overtakes around the outside, defending like a madman, and also keeping on the full overtake, and my foot flat whilst coming wide out of spoon. I don't know, must be something in the air at the moment, but, Either way, we're in fourth place now and we're going to see how our strategy pans out and if any of the guys in front are going to come in, which hopefully might get us a place or two. So moving ahead to lap number 10 here, you'll see that someone has had to come in. Unfortunately, although we kept everybody in sight, it's not going to be enough. It's quite a quick pit stop here at Suzuka anyway, kind of unrealistically quick if I'm honest. So the Brit is going to come in but then also come out in front. So we're still in fourth for now. There's some battling up in front so we could still have an opportunity yet. So moving to the end of the lap here you can see that I didn't really hang on to the guys in front and although there's some battling they're actually unless one of them goes off here which it doesn't look like they're going to there isn't going to be an opportunity to make any positions. Which is a shame really, but looking on the bright side, we have taken fourth place here. And looking back on these races, although we didn't achieve the results that I'd hoped, we're going to be back up to 99 SR and we finished these races despite the slight dip in the second race with improved driver rating overall. We're now up to 53,700. So improvement is happening, which is the aim in this week's races between the FIAs and some of you may have noticed that I'm becoming more aggressive going for and crucially making moves where I usually wouldn't both offensively and defensively which is something that you know I have been working on and definitely been thinking about with my mindset but for now guys that is the end of the video wow it's been a bit of a longer one so thank you to all of you who are still here at this point 23 odd minutes we're normally done a lot earlier than that but we're going to end it there i hope you enjoyed the video guys if you did please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already have a great week of racing guys and i will see you very shortly in the next one cheers